All right, in this unit, we're going to be looking at high-level geometry to low-level geometry in the means of, you know, character development. Now, in Unit 2, we already had a couple pieces built. Basically, really, this applies to all pieces of geometry. It's not inclusive to um, gauntlets or different kinds of helmets or anything like that, weapons or anything. It is inclusive to all geometry. Okay, so if we learn how to do a couple complex pieces, we can get the workflow down pat. And once the workflow is down pat, we're good to go. So we're going to be looking at this. Um, this is a character I developed, and it has all normal maps. So all this geometry is, in fact, uh, mostly fake. And it's good in the fact that, like right in this area, you can see that it's quite bumpy, but all that is is just... A few polygons. Still working on a weighting of the issues and everything else, but it's a good uh, first attempt at the animation. All right, now, so what I have here is a couple of those pieces. I'm just going to kind of walk you through the workflow, what it takes to get those pieces into a more usable format for games. And we're going to be looking at probably like the gauntlet there and probably the uh, chess piece. Okay. And since this character is mirrored on both sides, I only developed one side of the character. Well, this is in a bunch of subtools, just like always. You know, this is nothing new. The part I'm leaving out is the colorization phase, but I do that in Photoshop. I don't do that in ZBrush. You could do that in ZBrush and transfer it over. In fact, everything that you do can be transferred over. You would just have to have some kind of UVs on the item to transfer that item over with the actual texture and color and stuff like that. But other than that, it is do totally doable to transfer the color over. Again, I'm probably majorly doing this in Photoshop anyway. I'm, I'm not a big fan of painting inside ZBrush. I, I love sculpting here, but um, I'm so old school with the whole Photoshop thing that I couldn't tear myself away if I tried. Well, these things are uh, probably about 4 million polygons a piece, maybe, maybe a little bit less. So that would hinder our ability to have them inside a game. There's no doubt about it. What we're going to look at is getting these inside a blender and baking out the normal map there. We can bake the normal map onto a lower res cage a lot easier in blender because we can do it onto a triangulated model. Okay? So, along with textures, normal maps, ambient occlusion maps, the whole deal. Now, I'll say that's in my humble opinion, and everybody's workflow is a little bit different, so just kind of respect the fact that i got a workflow, and surely you can use all of ZBrush or all of Blender or some of Maya or something like that. I'm just going to show you mine and see how you like it. The first thing we got to do is decimate these parts. So the Decimation Master plugin is located at Pixelogic.com. You can download it very easy to install. I'll let you follow the directions on that. It just goes into the Z startup Z plugs directory. Decimation occurs when I need to lower this down to a usable level for something. Now, as far as games are concerned, I don't know if it's really all that good for games because it does lower it down, but at lower levels it, it starts to get a little wonky. So we're going to be looking at it, just getting it into Blender and using Blender to build the shell or base mesh for it. For each piece, I have to pre-process either all or current. I just do one at a time. And I'll do a piece. I'll put it in Blender. I'll export it out of Blender into Photoshop and et cetera and so forth. In the end, I get something that kind of looks like this or something that looks like this or this. Okay, so here's my 
final little normal maps and you can see all the normal maps are very high fidelity okay lots of change and this is good because in order for that to look good inside a web player like this you have to have some kind of really high fidelity normal map even to get that that much of a change unity waters down the normal map quite a bit so you have to take and make it a little bit more apparent once I pre-process that then I can decimate it I'm going to decimate it at 20% and usually I decimate all my pieces at 20% unless they're like 8 million and then I might go a little higher so I'm going to decimate the current value doesn't look like anything happened but this piece that was once 2 uh, million is actually a lot less now it's like 720 or something like that I can't see my readout but I remember that from uh, when I actually produced it for the other here I'm just going to export this out and I'll do this onto the desktop Let's see here. On to the desktop in a new folder, I think. Armor example. So this is going to be my gauntlet high whoop now I generally just undo that because that way it's back to where it needs to be as far as geometry goes so I'll just go control Z control Z back before I reprocessed it so there we go now I'll take a lower version of it something around like this and I'll export that. Something without any detail but just low enough to not be annoying. Then I'll export that and I'm going to call this gauntlet low. Okay. Now I could do that with a couple pieces if I wanted to. Uh, one or two should be sufficient because all I'm doing is showing you how to combine them also inside there. So I think I'll do the gauntlet and maybe the chest piece. There it is. pre-process current and again I'll decimate this down 20% okay and then export it out chest piece high. By the way, it is very easy to rename these and once you rename them, it'll rename the OBJ every time. It'll save you tons of time. So if you go to rename and rename these, every time you go to export an OBJ, you don't have to name the piece anymore. Very, very handy. Okay, so I'll just go right here and undo that a couple times. So it's good to have your base mesh, that's for sure. In this case, this one will do just fine. I could produce these as far as the normal maps within ZBrush, but I found this little workflow a little bit easier sometimes. But 
Okay, no, I wouldn't say easier. I would say it's a little accurate. So I can tell the distance between baking upon the high and low. Here, this is based upon the change of the highest and lowest versions, not the outside shell. So I can't, couldn't bake this over to another piece of geometry. Uh, maybe I could, but still, um, I like this workflow. It's very, very easy, very clean. Hasn't produced anything bad yet. So, and that's the whole thing. When you want to do normal mapping, you go, you want high fidelity, and you want lots of bright colors and everything, nice, simple. Okay. Now, I got my high and I got my low saved out. In the next video, I'll show you what you got to do with those.